アニメーションゲームマシン DCFX Okay, before I start today's Retrobat in NEC PC FX setup guide for Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation setup guides like this one today. Just means you'll get notified every time I release a new guide, and it also helps out my channel too. So, next up on this Retrobat setup guide playlist of mine, we have got the awesome NEC PC FX. Now, this one's predominantly Japanese based. But we also got English patches for our games for this system. We need a couple of BIOS files. We, of course, need some games. And I'm also going to show you how to convert your .bin and .q files into CHD, which is going to save you some space. So let's actually convert first. We're going to just head over to this website, and I'll leave the link in my description, and download this program here, CHD Man. If we open up this zip folder that we just downloaded, I'm just going to create a new folder on my desktop. Right click, new folder, and simply call it CHD Man. And we're going to drag those contents inside. And there we go. Okay, so in my PCFX games folder, I've got several games just here. If we go into Battle Heat, you'll have very similar if you've ripped your discs. Lots of dot bins and one dot Q. Let's get rid of all of those files and start saving some space too. If I go into my CHD man folder, I'm going to copy CHD man and the next file down, which is a bat file, it reads Q GDI ISO to CHD. I'm going to make a copy of those and just paste them inside of that battle heat folder like this. And then I'm going to double left click on the dot bat file. This is going to bring up a little terminal and it's going to then start converting. And here we go. So obviously this is going to take time to do, but like I say, it is going to save us a lot of space in the long run. And it's going to get rid of all those really irritating bin files and queue files. Okay, cool. So once that's finished converting, if we just open up the Battle Heat folder, we're going to find a CHD file just here. So what we can now do is just Control and A and delete everything. Now I'm going to just left click on CHD whilst holding Control down and then delete everything. Very cool. So that's how you do it. Very easy. So I'm not going to do every single one of my games, but that's just an example. And I'll leave the link in my description for that so you can do it yourself. Next up, then let's actually start preparing Retrobat for PC FX. If I just right click on my Retrobat folder, open file location. First of all, we're going to head into the BIOS folder. And if I go into my BIOS folder here, this is the two BIOS files for PCFX that you're going to need. fx-scsi.rom and pcsx.rom. Let's just copy those into the Retrobat BIOS folder. Just make note that those BIOS files aren't going to go inside a folder just there. They're loosely going to just be placed. Next up, if we just come out of the BIOS folder in Retrobat, we're next going to go down to ROMs. And it's in the ROMs folder, we can then start putting our games. So I'm going to just scroll down until I come across PCFX. And here's PCFX. If I go into my games folder, what I'm going to do is firstly go into Battle Heat and I'm going to drag this game out. And there we go. Now for the other games, because these are in .bin.q, I'm actually going to just leave these inside of their respective folders and just drag them in. Okay, so everything's now in place and what we can do is open up Retrobat. Okay, we're inside Retrobat and we have got PCFX visible now. So I'm going to just go into this one. 
And here's my games. So what I'm going to do first is grab some artwork. Just press start button. Brings up the main menu. Down to scraper. And I'm going to scrape from screen scraper for this. I'm going to go down to scraper settings. Image source I'm going to select box 3D. Box source I'm going to select is box 2D. Logo source I'm going to keep this as will. And I'm then going to just go down and enable fan art in case Screen Scraper can get any official artworks for these games. I'm then going to go down and add my username and account and scrape now. Okay, so scrape and finish, update game list to apply changes. So through main menu, we're just going to go up to game settings and update game list and press yes. And here we go. So we now got our artwork complete with some preview videos so we can see what it is we got and what these games look like. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is just press select button which is going to open up view options. If I go down to advanced system options and emulator, as we can see here we can either use the first option which is RetroArch Libretro or Libretro RetroArch Mendefen PCFX. Or we can download Mendefen PCFX and we could also download BizHawk. I personally suggest putting this to auto which is going to pick up the first option libretto mendofin if you've got any games which have trouble with this retro watch core then just download bizhawk for example if i select this and open up a game we're going to need to install bizhawk for example so if i just press yes And here we go. Okay, and to play your games, what we're gonna do is just use D-pad, which is gonna move your cursor or your hand around the screen. If I just press my action button to enter the game in the middle,
Now, for some games for PCFX through Retrobat, you might find some games don't work too well. If I go to Advanced System Options and put this game to Libretro and boot up the game. You're going to find this is very sluggish and laggy and there's no reason for this it's just that some standalone emulators are a lot better than retro watch course as you can see my hands the cursor here is very slow i'm not even going to attempt to go into the game so in these cases it's best off really going for one of these different emulators which we can download if i select bizhawk again and open up the same game As we can see, this method of emulation is a lot better, it's a uh, 100%. Now, irritatingly, without using RetroArch, we can actually download things like Mega Bezels. Um, if your games are struggling using the Retro Core, then that's the only way we can actually use Mega Bezels. So, if you're planning on doing that, you're going to be limited. Uh, as you can see, the gameplay using Bizzle Care is 100% smooth and utterly playable. If I was to play this same game, using the retro watch core it would be going at something like 2 fps and that's no good for anyone So we got lots of different video options on each emulator and also through RetroWatch 2, but BizHawk, we can also change video settings through this alone. If we go down to decorations, we can actually take away the decoration. So I'm going to put that to none. Display filter, we can actually add something like scan lines to this if you wish. Vertical sync, I'm going to make sure this is on yes to take away any screen tear. Integer scaling, this one's going to be on by default. That's just going to give the games a slight blur. And if we lastly go down to visual rendering, upscale filter, we can actually upscale how the games look. So if we put this to say bilinear, and we also got scanline intensity. So if you're applying scanlines to your PCFX games, we can actually use this to change the depth of the scanline. So I'm going to just leave it to auto, which is 25%. And if you get any issues with a black screen or whatever with your PCFX games, go to drivers, video, and just change over your video driver. For me, this works fine using Direct 3D9. And we also got 3.8 pad to key profile. If there's games that requires a keyboard, you can actually use pad to keyboard configuration to map out your controller. So I've covered that many times in the past, but really it's just a simple case of just pressing, say, the A button on D-pad up and then working out which key it is on your keyboard, which uses that function. So if we go back into one of the games now with these video settings applied.
And as you can see, that game has now got scan lines applied, and it looks a little bit crisper than it did originally of applying those video settings. Now, you're also going to find, using standalone emulators like BizHawk, you're going to find we don't actually have an option here to create a full screen. We can go to force full screen, but it's not going to give us one. So sometimes we're just going to have to go to Libretro, and by using Libretro Core, we got game aspect ratio now. But the trouble is, like I said, if we put this to full, some games will work fine with Retro Origin, others it's going to struggle, like you've seen just a minute ago. If I just open up one of these games again, There we go, we got full screen. But the game is lagging, and I'm going to say that it isn't the case for every PC FX game using Libretro Chorus. And that's it for today's Retrobat and PCFX setup guide for Windows PC. Like I said throughout the video, you've got a choice really between RetroArch and BizHawk and Mednafin. Each one of these has got their strengths and weaknesses. Now, like you've seen, if we use RetroArch in a couple of games I tried, you'll find these games lag a lot. So, like I said, I can't speak for every PC FX game, but there's going to be games which is going to work on one source of emulation rather than the other. Anyways, if you liked today's setup guide, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.